Yes, got it. Okay, anyone, uh, everyone, let's see. For club business, we have a couple things to discuss. Uh, number the first thing, the first order of business is just to remind everyone that we will not be meeting on December 27th or January the 3rd as we take this time out for our holiday celebrations, festivities, and being spending time with the family. So we will not have, in other words, next week is our last meeting of the year. We will not meet on December 27th or January the 3rd. Other club businesses are TLI. All officers are requested to attend TLI training. Those dates have been given out. I have the dates, I can give them out again. And uh, I need to make sure I have the email myself about registration because it's the same process that we always do registration, right? Um, oh no, Carrie, you went to training Saturday, right? Yes, um, basically the same, but one thing uh, you need to type in the ID, num ID your member oh. ID. So member that's ID. I because uh, I, I think you could still join the meeting without the saying ID, but um, they it's hard for them to give you the credit. So, mm -hmm. so make sure you have the uh, ID, member ID, okay. and if you can get the member ID from the Toastmaster International. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yep, very good. All right, anybody need help getting your member ID? Send me a little chat, we can go over it after the meeting or um, I can send you an email because I remember having to go and find that, but it is on TLI. You can find your member ID under your TLI, TLI profile. Uh, thank you for that. So please, please, please pick your date and go ahead and get registered so we can be accounted for, for having our adequate training. Also, let's see what's on the agenda. We talked quite a bit at our uh, officers meeting last Thursday. It was a great meeting. And we're just still trying to figure out ways that we can not only, we have got to get back to our distinguished club status here for Hilltoppers. So we definitely need to see what we can do to start drumming up some uh, new faces, some visitors and potential new members. We, I remember I owed uh, you guys a response on what the chair for the speeches, I mean, I'm sorry, for the competition was gonna be, Carrie, I know you uh, offered or volunteered to be a part of the upcoming competitions. And Crystal, correct me if I'm wrong, the first competition that we were talking about was the competition that was gonna be at the local level. So in our case, it would be the Hilltopper or the Foley level. And then one, it take at least two members of the club to compete against each other. The competition or as a matter of fact, the voting will be done by someone in the area, but outside of our immediate club. From there, the winner will go on to the area level and then the district level, so on and so forth. That was put forth in our notes that I gave you guys. Um, hopefully you all saw the email and was able to understand. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Is there anything else that I'm missing for a club business? Does anyone else have any club business? Which contest are there going to be on this round? It's gonna be the International and Tall Tales. <clears throat> which I've never seen them do tall tales. So I don't really know. Actually, I did see that before. It, yeah. yeah, I have seen somebody do that before because I really thought it was a, I thought it was, they were telling the truth, but apparently it was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was all in it. I was really all in it, but I wanted to piggyback <laughs> on what you said. Um, if, if Carrie's the only one that signs up for Hillstoppers to do this, um, the contest that you don't have to have a club right. contest but mm -hmm. I had I was a part of advanced club last year and I was the only one that signed up but they still made me like sign in like I was in a competition to give me that practice so mm. you may want to still give her to give her that even though she's done it you know two three times you're a pro mm -hmm. Carrie um, but just to kind of get her ready for the area area contest just to get back get in that vibe you know Okay. Um, that formal structure. <clears throat> Sounds yeah. good. Good idea. I need to work more than that to do what you said, Crystal, but I, I think it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You got this. 
I think that was it for me. Oh, I'm sorry. I have you. <laughs> for our side, fortunately, the only people that we have on today are people that was a part of our office of executive meeting. So you should have gotten those minutes from the meeting. And if you have any further questions or if I need to um, go over anything, please let me know. Carrie, you had your hand up? Yes. Um, I emailed you and about the email. Uh, yeah, do I need to submit the uh, self evaluation from Thursday? I thought you did send it to me. Actually, I I just asked you, should I? I already feel that I finished it. I already made mm -hmm. it. <laughs> just, uh -huh. uh, just before I submit button, I asked you, should I do that? And if you say yes, I'm going to send it. <laughs> yeah, just send it <laughs> to plan. just me. Send it to Just I and then um, Maurice as VPM and VPE will help me and help you as we will go over them. Um, and then we can get back with you. Any feedback that we need to share with you or that you may want to talk about or something you may need some help with or some further assistance on, then we'll go from there. But it was more or less just a tool for you to see what your roles are and then see if you feel like you need some assistance in those roles. Okay, um, but anyway, anyway, I'll submit, I'll do that uh, tomorrow. I'll do it by tomorrow. Okay, yeah, and I asked to That's have you turned in by next Monday. I think I said the 20th. Yeah, by the 20th. Okay. okay. What else? Any more club business? I will do our invocation and pledge. And, oh, well, then I'll turn this over to our Toastmasters for the evening. My apologies. Toastmaster, it's on you. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Guess what? That is our theme. It's glad to see everyone. Uh, we do need to start with our invocation and pledge. Olivia. That's me. Would you please? <laughs> yes, yeah, one of my favorite ones. I know I've said it more than one time, probably more than twice, maybe three times, but it is so true to me. And I always, I learned this at a very young age and I always try to do it. It motivates me. It's the simplest thing, but it really keeps me motivated. So for those of you who have had to hear me say it more than one time, I'm sorry, but for the new people who may not have heard it, then my favorite, one of my favorite invocations is, once a task has begun, never leave until it's done. Be it great or small, do it well or not at all. That is my invocation. If you would, please cover your heart with your hand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. And back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much. I saw the theme this week, and the theme being, guess what? And I have four children. During the holidays, guess what is like the theme of everything? Because it's guess what? Guess what I want for Christmas? Guess what I want to do? Guess what we want to eat? Guess what we've where we want to go. We're going to Christmas parades. We're going to uh, out to dinner, having fun, decorating a tree, having a lovely time with guess what during the holidays. Mm -hmm. I love this theme for us. And tonight as we go through, we're going to ask guess what? First guess what is guess who? Guess who's going to be our general evaluator? That role is going to go to Crystal. If Crystal, would you please let us know what you'll be doing in your team? Good evening, fellow Toastmasters, Hilltoppers, and Foley. I will be your general evaluator today. My overall role is to ensure that we have an excellent meeting by evaluating us in general. I also will be relying on a wonderful team of people to make sure that's done. That first person will be my all counter slash grammarian. Maurice, if you would, unmute your mic and explain your role. Yes, as the grammarian and all counter, well, first with the all counter, I will be keeping track of the Oz or filler words. And the as the grammarian, I'll check on misuse of, of the English language 
And the word of the day is hypothesis. And let me, and the definition of hypothesis is supposition or proposed explanation made on the basis of limited evidence as a starting point for further investigation. An educated guess, in other words. So that is the word of the day, hypothesis. And those are my roles of all counter and grammarian. Perfect, thank you, Maurice. I also will be counting on my timer to make sure that we stay on time. Very, very important thing to do. To do. So if you would, Carrie, please unmute your mic and give your explanation of your role. Thank you, Crystal. I am your timer tonight. My role is to count the speech. We have prepared speech. Olivia going to do okay, eight minutes. So six to eight minutes speech. If you you see green at six, is that correct? Six six seven eight or six. Seven, seven thirty, and eight. I, I see her. It says five to seven minutes speech. If you're doing the intro to Toastmasters mentoring, mentoring is that what you're doing, Olivia? No, it's going to be the eight minute. The eval that I sent out was just a basic evaluation. The one that's in the agenda is not quite right. Oh, okay. For six to eight, so uh, six, seven, and eight should be the colors, Carrie. No worries. My role is to count your time at speech. First, prepare speech for long speech. You see six minutes, you see green at six minutes, seven minutes, you see yellow, you see red at eight minutes. We have a table topic, one to two minutes. You see green at one minute, one minute and 30 seconds. You see this yellow, and you see red at two minutes. And evaluation, two to three minutes. You see green at two minutes, yellow at Two and a half, two minutes and 30 seconds. It's red at three minutes and time to wrap your speech. Thank you, back to you. Perfect. Thank you, Carrie. It is my hypothesis that it's very important to be punctual. So without further ado, I'm going to make sure we stay on schedule with our Toastmasters meeting to begin our speaking portion, which I'll give back to the Toastmaster. Back to you, Buck. Thank you very much, Crystal. Very excited about tonight again. Guess what? I remember being a kid, coming back to school after Christmas break and everybody had a guess what? Guess what I got for Christmas? Guess what we did this week? Guess what where we went? It's an, always a fun time to ask that question because the answers are so wild and fun. As we go through the meeting, I want you to think of guess what? Guess what you want to do for the holidays? I have the distinct privilege to introduce our first speaker tonight. It's a prepared speech by Olivia Carter. She is working on her effective communications path. I had the privilege to be evaluated by Olivia on my first time speaking with this club. I love to hear her speak. So please join me in welcoming Olivia with her five to seven minute speech. Olivia, please. Can you 
in the midst of all that's going on around. How do you choose to be happy? Number one, have an attitude of gratitude. Always try to look on the brighter side. Do you know that having an attitude of gratitude is helpful and in including things like self-improvement? Yes. It is evident that being grateful is an excellent way of boosting your opportunities for self-growth and personal development. Being grateful in our lives can transform our personalities for the better. Just choosing to have an attitude of gratitude really helps self-growth and personal development. Number two, let me tell you another way that choosing happiness or making happiness a choice is good for you. For your physical health, studies have shown that people who choose this attitude of gratitude, who choose to be happy, who look for ways to improve their mental health, their mental status, also have improvements in their physical health. A professor at the University of California, his name is Dr. Robert Emmons. He is a well-known expert in the science of gratefulness. He affirms that a gratitude attitude is beneficial to our body and our overall health. Let's talk about some other ways. How you can choose to be happy. This one is easy. I promise, don't take my word for it. Just try it for yourself. When you get up in the morning, get your coffee and find the biggest, the largest, the most pronounced smile that you can find, put it on and wear it all day. I 
promise you, it will change your personality for the better. It was a famous author whose name I may mess up, but I think it's pronounced Thich Nhat Hun. And he is an important figure in the field of mindfulness and meditation. And he once wrote this famous quote, sometimes your joy is the reason why you smile. And sometimes your smile is the only reason you have joy. So smile, even when you feel down and eventually you will start to feel happier and even healthier. Another way that kindness can be a choice, choose to be, I'm sorry, another way that happiness can be a choice is by choosing to be kind. Do you know that when you do kind acts for other people, there is a so-called happiness hormone that is released? It boosts your serotonin, and that's that neurotransmitter response for feelings of well-being and satisfaction. Endorphin levels also rise, leading to a phenomenon known as a helper's high. Did you know that you can really feel a sense of high or rush just by helping others and in turn makes yourself happier? No matter what life brings you, you can find something happy to focus on. Fix your focus. Search for things in your life that you are grateful for. Does this mean that every day will be great? Absolutely not. It's all about how you choose to look at it. The skit at the beginning of this speech was one person with two different outlooks. Guess who that person is? That's me. That's me. All throughout the pandemic, I had to work, work, work. And some days I was a little... I'm essential, I have to go to work. But then there were days when I was just excited that I'm essential, I have to go to work. And yes, five years ago, I built my home. And yes, they screwed up my back porch, one of them. And yes, they made my sidewalk too narrow. But guess what? I custom built my own house. There is so much that we have to be grateful for. Every day I make the choice and I choose happiness. Fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, what do you choose? Happiness is a choice. Back to you, Toastmaster. Thank you for that wonderful speech, Olivia. I I love the choice of happiness. I love the attitude for gratitude. It's such a a great way to live. And it does change your physical and your emotional and everything. I I can't say enough about that. It's a wonderful speech. Thank you. I think, Crystal, you had your hand raised? Oh, no, I was clapping. That was my my virtual (laughs) clap. There it is. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Sorry. No worries. Yes, wonderful speech. Guess what? We've had a wonderful speech. Now we get to practice some impromptu speaking. We get to have table topics. One of my most favorite and fun parts of a meeting. I'm gonna turn it over to our topics master, Crystal. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. And thank you fellow Toastmasters. I have some interesting questions for you all, and it goes along with our guess what theme. I would like to see if we can figure out the answers to our fellow Toastmasters questions. And we'll start first with hmm, Maurice. Since we have our lovely holidays coming up as of next week, the question is, Maurice, what do you think we should not why what should excuse me 
What is your most memorable Christmas celebration? I didn't want to ask that question because it's kind of negative. So I'll skip to another one. What is your most memorable Christmas celebration? I want to guess what it is. Let me hear it. All right, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests, what is my most memorable Christmas celebration? I don't have it off the top of my head. I have, I had many growing up. Uh, I could just say maybe one during my school days or I don't remember any recently that I would say was my most memorable. <laughs> I, I would say during one of my school years when they had, when we had a big Christmas party and gifts were exchanged and everyone was happy and celebrating or to, anticipating mm -hmm. getting out of school and out for two weeks mm -hmm. so just with their families to, and also receive their gifts and, and maybe to some extent to give gifts. So that is the answer to guess what? I don't know if you had a hypothesis with it. <laughs> I just flat out told you what, what it was. Back to you, Topics Master. Thank you. Well, I, th I thought you were going to mention something about like your favorite gift or something that you might have received. So you're right, though, about those two weeks of being off from school. Man, that was a wonderful thing. Yeah. So thank you for giving us a memory that we all, yeah. can all relate to. So here's another one. <laughs> I'm going to ask Reed. Reed, answer the following question or statement finish the following statement i'm jealous of santa claus because i am jealous because of santa claus because nobody ever gets mad at the big dude he is can do whatever he wants he can climb down your chimney he can eat your food on the bar he could even drink some of your eggnog and he gets away with it. Nobody just gets upset with him. So if I were to do that, climb down somebody's chimney, go over and eat all their freshly baked cookies, I go out and mess up their tree, putting things under it and ruffling up some decorations, chances are I'm either going to get shot or I'm going to have somebody awfully upset with me. So it's one of the things I've always been jealous of Santa Claus because he is just going to get several people even coming in to sit on his lap because they just can't wait to smell his aroma, feel his beard, rub his belly. You know, Buddha doesn't get the belly rubbed as much as what Santa Claus does. So I just always have felt that envy and jealousy with Santa Claus. And he's got the best set of horses I've ever seen pulling his sleigh around because they can even fly. And so all of the stories built up with him, you've just got several things that are just awesome about uh, getting up there to Santa Claus, who would not be jealous of him. He just has it all together and such a uh, such a great guy. And I, I'm going to say that I just have to be jealous of him because of those things. Madam Table Topics Master. I love that answer. I'm going to piggyback on that and say I'm jealous of him because he gets to eat the cookies and 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 nobody says anything. You know, I want to eat all I can, but actually I'm pregnant and I guess people let me get by with it too now. So that's, you know what, me and Santa, we can, we can relate right now <laughs> with the big belly. So perfect. Thanks, Reed. So, Buck, you have four kids and I'm sure they're expecting a lot of gifts under that tree. But your kids come out and there are no gifts, okay? There are no gifts. So I want you to explain to us five reasons why you should not give gifts to others on Christmas. Can you explain that? Five reasons why you should not give gifts to others? Well, one reason is it's a medical reason. It's called the Grinch syndrome. And if you have the Grinch syndrome, you are medically incapable of giving gifts. It's a very bad syndrome. You start to get kind of green around the face, a little fuzz like the Grinch. And that is one reason 
you may not be able to give gifts at Christmas. Another reason you may not give gifts at Christmas is because they're too big. Sometimes your gift is so big, you just can't give it away. This one is very common in my household because I have four loving kids and their hearts are so big and they give so much love. You just can't give it as a gift. It's just too big. Another reason that we may not be giving gifts at Christmas is because you got to travel. You got to carry them with you. You may have to find a way to get them there. Another way, reason you may not give gifts at Christmas, because you might have to find them. Sometimes they get hidden and like a scavenger hunt, you can't give them, you got to find them. I need one more good reason to not give gifts at Christmas. My last good reason to not give gifts at Christmas are I forgot. And that has happened. My wife, I bought her a gift and I forgot where I hid it. In fact, I bought it so early, I forgot where I hid it and I forgot that I bought it. July comes around and the 4th of July is coming around and we're cleaning up our house I believe this was our, our second Christmas together, and it was the third summer we had together, and I found it. So that's my last reason for not giving a gift, is I forgot where I hid it. Thank you very much. Woo, Buck, I gave you like the hardest question, because I was like, I'm trying to find five in my mind. I was trying to guess with you, but you did that, so congrats. Wow. Okay, I see it's 7.24, so um, Toastmaster and Timer, let me know. I feel like I can ask two more, but stop me if, if I need to. So the next one will go to Carrie. Carrie, if you have unlimited money, what is one electronic gadget that you would buy for yourself and why? If you had unlimited money, what is one electronic gadget that you would buy for yourself for Christmas and why? Please unmute your mic when you get ready. My favorite electric cassette. <laughs> I would buy. Okay. I would buy new cell phone or a smartphone. The reason is mine's old. It still works fine. I changed the new battery. It's still good. But one thing is that up. Uh, I tried to get the application. I tried to download the application to save some money. Like uh, I could save the 10 cent for gas station. I could get the one by get a burger deal or something like that. However, the, the application is not compatible with my cell phone right now because it's old. That's really unfortunate. That's the reason I like to have a new smartphone. However, I'm satisfied with the current smartphone and I'm satisfied with all the computer, whatever I have. But if I have some extra money, I'd like to have a new cell phone. Thank you. I hear you. You do need unlimited money with some of these cell phones because they're expensive. It's a wonderful, wonderful gadget. All right, last one will go to Olivia, right? You're the only one that hasn't answered one, right, Olivia? I know you were a speaker, but everybody's getting a table topic. All oh. right. I want you, Olivia, to explain to us, to us why Christmas holidays should be a month-long affair. Oh, man, despite the many reasons why we shouldn't get gifts, and the fact that most of us don't have unlimited money, 
So we can't always get those gadgets that we want. And although maybe our previous Christmases may not have been our best, but Christmas is such a heartwarming season. No matter how you look at it, oh, well, now, unless you have the, the Grinch syndrome. Oh, that's scary. For me, no matter how I look at Christmas, it is just such a warming sensation that I feel, almost a euphoric type feeling. And I think about marshmallows, or as the song says, chestnuts roasting on an open fire. Not that I could ever imagine trying to roast a chestnut. I just remember as a kid, those things being impossible to even get into. I couldn't imagine trying to roast one, but I sure have roasted my share of marshmallows. So it's cold outside and then you get to build a big, huge fire and everyone snuggles up against it and tell stories and laugh and make marshmallows or make s'mores, drinking hot cocoa, family comes in town, you get extra days off from work or kids are out of school. And even if you don't give the first gift, you get to see people that you may not have seen all year. And sometimes one day or one weekend is just not long enough. Crystal, I think Christmas should be a whole month. And I may have to even look into that. What can I do to make Christmas a whole month for my neighborhood, my community, my job, my city, my state, my country? I don't know. Laws are forever changing and we are the people and we make the laws. I think if enough of us got together, we can figure out a way to make Christmas last a whole month. I don't know about you, but I'm excited already. Back to you, Table Topics Master. Awesome, Olivia. I love that uh, hypothesis of why we should have Christmas for a whole month. But to, to be honest with you all, as I wrap up my table topics, it can be all year if you think about having an attitude of gratitude, That's right. being what they say, random acts of kindness, go through the drive through bless somebody with a gift, free drink, you know, and we can do Christmas all year because it's about the the spirit of giving. Of giving, that's right. Oh, yes, right. So back to you, our Toastmaster book. Thank you very much. Those were very fun questions and a bit challenging, but bring it on. It was a good time. <laughs> well, we move on to our next portion where we get to learn how we did. We get to learn what we did well and what we can improve on. To start with, I need to invite to introduce our general evaluator because we like hearing Crystal speak. So Crystal, would you please take over as our general evaluator? Thank you. Love wearing multiple roles or hats because that's what Toastmaster does. So thank you, Toastmaster. But at this time, I would like to ask my evaluator, Reed, if you would please evaluate Olivia. You got it. Well, Olivia, I'm going to give you my best hypothesis of your speech. First, I got several things I could mention. I will send those to you in writing because I could probably get a, a probably like a seven minute evaluation here of all the things that you did well. Uh, one of the things I love, you brought back a thing I learned a long time ago that it's called a rule of three for memory. And you did that when you start off work, work, work. You know, that's going to stay with us probably for the rest of the night and maybe on into tomorrow where we'll start saying, okay, work, work, work. And you're just going all around. So you left us that memorable phrase. I thought you're the perfect role model here, an example of a vocal variety, any kind of presentation. It, you got your highs, your lows, your excitement. You got soft. You just did every single one of those things exceptionally well. I also loved how you you kept your eyes right at the camera. It was easy to have a link with you. It felt like you were right in the room with us. And I just love that. And the other thing I love that you did really well is you gave us several quote, quotes from experts. When you do that, that's the greatest way that you can validate your points in a speech 
because we'll go back to what that quote was and help us remember uh, what that, that point was. I've learned years ago that if you, sometimes people say, well, I can't find anything wrong with your speech. In that particular case, you always find it, well, in my opinion, how I think you could have made it even better. So a couple of suggestions here for you. A couple of times there, when you asked a question of your audience, I want to suggest when you do that, even with you setting and with a camera, I want you to take your hand and do this. Now, I forget the exact question. Say, say, what would you say about this? And just put the hand out because that's inviting. I also learned years ago when you're doing that, you never want to just point the finger because it's an indication somebody told a coach a long time ago. It's like you point the gun at your audience, but just keep the open hand out there. Have you ever? And just ask that question. So that's going to bring us all in even more. I also want to suggest that you do what I call strategic pauses. Like you said, work, work once, once, but then I say, here, you just do it again. Say work, work, work. That little pause has that huge element to us where it's so memorable and it will stick with us. Mm -hmm. And there's another one where I, toward the end, you said, fellow Toastmasters, what do you choose? Pause and say, I choose happiness. When you want to make a very profound statement, especially if it's your opening and when it's your closing, if you'll just add that pause in there, a strategic pause, you're going to bring us into that. That is going to stick with us you know, for, for hours after the speech, maybe days afterwards. And you, uh, the greatest compliment you can ever give a speaker, I've learned, is when they come back and quote you later. I remember when you said this in that speech. And I think if you'll add those strategic pauses in there, you're going to give us things that we will remember about that speech at that point. My favorite thing that you do it is the greatest thing you'll ever see. If you think about any professional speaker you've ever gone to watch, there's a one element that they all have. They and you have it. It's that beaming confidence. When you got there, you just exude that confidence in what you're saying. You're like, I know what I'm talking about, and I'm going to help you experience and get to be a part of that from what I'm talking about. And that's one thing I hope you are, stay aware of and that you never lose, because oh. that is something that's always going to bring people towards you. Even if you're not speaking, when you exude that, they are going to want to be around you. And they're going to want to hear exactly what you have to say. I thought it was a tremendous speech. I, I have to admit it's been a few moons since your last one. I don't remember totally with that one, but I will remember this one for a long time. Uh, congratulations, Olivia. Thank you. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you so much, Mr. Reed. I just love learning from other people's evaluation. I felt like that just gave me confidence just gleaming from you I mean because it was definitely uplifting the feedback and you got a lot of things that you can incorporate and a lot of things I hope that we can take with us as well so that is why we're in Toastmasters to help each other and learn from each other excellent excellent evaluation excellent speech at this time Maurice if you would unmute your mic and give us your grammarian O'Connor report all right thank you for the all counter report. We did pretty good overall, as far as I know. And then someone's going to have to tell me how I did. But as far as filler words, I I, said, I didn't hear that many at all, if any. I guess Olivia. The only thing, I, I, well, her speech was muffled from my end during the first minute or so. You know from. From, from my perspective, but during her speech, it was just one time where she started to say a phrase, she cut herself off and started again. So that's the only thing that I saw there. And then Crystal, I guess during the table topics, presented the table topics, I found one time you said, you know, and then read just one all during the evaluation and nothing else from anyone else as far as filler words. And then the word of the day, as far as I can remember, it was me and Crystal. I don't know any, if anyone else used the word hypothesis, let me know. All right, that's my 
I'll counter and Grammarian's report. Back to you, Madam General Evaluator. Thank you, Maurice. At this time, Carrie, if you would unmute your mic and give us your report. Good evening, everyone. Time of report, Olivier, you are prepared speech. Eight minutes and 10 seconds. Maurice, you are table topic speech. One minute and 19 seconds. Read, one minute and 35 seconds. Buck, two minutes and 28 seconds. Myself, Kiri, one minute and 20 seconds. Olivia, your table topic speech, two minutes and 10 seconds. Read your evaluation, four minutes and 12 seconds. Thank you. Thank you, Carrie. Looks like we all did well overall on our time. I'm going to wrap up this section with my general evaluator report. I love that we have our veterans that are here that are strong and true, staying true to the mission, staying true to the agenda today. So thank you all for coming. I also love that we were flexible. We were able to jump in and serve a role uh, as needed. And that is so wonderful. I mean, that allows us to know that we can depend on each other to do what needs to be done to complete the meeting. As your general evaluator, of course, just like the speeches, there's some things that we can improve on. So one of the things that I would suggest is, once again, at the end of the meeting, trying to have as many roles filled. And then if we can, maybe two days prior to follow up with some of our members and see if we can get those agenda roles filled before the meeting. And of course, we have our network of other Toastmasters that we can pull from. We had our area council meeting on Saturday. So definitely reach out to them. They'll be in the, may be able to help. That way we can have the meeting roles filled beforehand as, as well. And the last thing is, I think, Olivia, you mentioned your speech was a general speech. You can still use that for focus on the positive if you already journal or vocal variety project because your speech was already a vocal variety speech. So if you haven't done that project already, you can apply this, the speech you gave today to that particular project so that you all can get credit. Overall, we continue to improve Toastmasters. We continue to work together and that is something that should be seen as a strength of us. And I think we are better and we're stronger together when we come together. So excellent meeting. Thank you all. Back to you, Toastmaster Buck. Thank you very much for this encouraging words, Crystal. I wanna thank you all for allowing me to be your Toastmaster tonight. Uh, it's kind of like being an, a guest speaker. So it's always fun to me to be Toastmaster. It's also fun to me sometimes to get a role in the spur of the moment because you got to think up something and it helps you practice. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm going to turn it back over to Olivia. Please, Olivia. Thank you. Uh, let me take my hand down. Crystal, I had a question for you. And that was, I know you were, I was going to ask you, how can I incorporate this? So you're saying, even if that's not the path that I've chosen, I can still take credit for this speech. Like I have two paths. One of them is uh, effective communication. And the other one is um, leadership, something. I can't remember the other path. Is it effective coaching? Is that what you mean? Effective coaching? Um, no, I don't think so. I'm going to have to go look it up and see. The Vocal Variety Project is in every single path. So okay. if you've not done that at all, then mm -hmm. yes, you, you just have to see which path you want to apply it to. It's, it's either an elective in one of your paths, or if you just enrolled in that path, they've moved the researching presenting project that used to be in level one. They've, mm -hmm. moved, that, they've moved that out of level one and until an elective. So the new people that join Toastmasters, they have their icebreaker first, they have evaluation and feedback, and their second, uh, excuse me, their third project is, I believe, Focal Variety now. They don't have to do that research, research and presenting anymore. So I don't know when you enrolled in your path, it if it was in the past, no. if it's it was months, okay, then you, then you would have to 
figure out which give me the names of your path of your paths and I can tell you where that vocal variety project is it's an elective at this point and yes you can use it okay today. I will send you an email or a text message sounds good thank you great speech once more and then, thank you oh and then I got to give you guys the pleasure of letting me share my screen so y'all can see okay the tree um, yes <laughs> A beautiful tree. <laughs> Ta-da, did it come up? Wait, it's, did I it? it's it's coming. It's slowly uh, has, I see. has started screen. Oh, that's so pretty. Can you come over to my house and help me? Oh but it but the topic is not on this picture, but I did all that from YouTube University. And it oh. made my living room to a tea yellow, white, I mean, navy blue or midnight blue, silver, white with a little hint of gold. So oh, Reed, need, Reed needs that tree for his house. He's in the Navy. He's a veteran. Oh, <laughs> there you go. Yeah. I have to hook you up. I'll take it. If <laughs> I can get this thing to stop share. Oh, my screen is going nuts. Okay. That's it. Just had to share my tree. Beautiful. Tree. <laughs> good job all right guys that is it for me does anyone else have anything did we miss anything can you send me that link where you found out how to do that for your tree i need help on my oh oh yeah girl i went to youtube and honey i just had myself a good time and i'll even <laughs> tell you where to go get the that fabric from which is called tool i'll tell you where to get it from and i really 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 want to do our guess what because it was set for the end of the meeting and we have mm -hmm. two minutes till but we only have one member here from hilltoppers that would even probably have the answer oh so i rather us wait and i would like to reincorporate this guess what um topic and I'm gonna do it ahead of time with some planning so we can everyone can participate and have the whole little guess what. And then I wanna make the table topics around the answer at the end. So I'll be table topics master that day. And then throughout the table topics questions, it will be leading to what the answer will be. So it'll be really fun. I'm excited about it, but I'd rather not do it tonight because I doubt it if anybody from Foley would know the answer because it's kind of a heel toppers type question. If that's okay with you all. <laughs> no problem. Good okay. All righty. Well, that's it for me. I don't have any further business. Look how Maurice is over there laughing. No, Maurice, you can't get the answer. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. All right, guys, that is it for me. And um, I'll think of some more things. And if you guys can help us think of a theme, I really want to do what we can, especially going into the next year to make this Zoom call for Hilltoppers and Foley as much fun as possible. And I mean, I just want to be engaging and, and you know, make this make it exciting so people can come in, do their speech, feel good about it, and have an hour worth of good time. Smiles, happiness, I truly, truly believe happiness is a choice. And I yep. want to make this one hour that we meet on Zoom a happy choice. That's my goal. So. Aww. We'll see what we can do. We got one more this one more meeting this year, and then we're going to take off, and hopefully next year we're going to come back with a bang. So that's it for me, guys, as your acting president. Now, tell me this, Crystal, before we get off. And Maurice, you can stop recording now. All um, right. What do you, I know you guys were saying that you were going to chair some of the meetings.